All right, good morning, Wasteland. Mr. G bringing you the ultimate cross out video today. You're going, Mr. G, what is it? What have you created today? What are you going to do today? Okay, guys, I look, I haven't shaved because I've been working so tirelessly on this video. Through years of research, the team of experts. Uh, AKA the, the mod team and a lot of the people on the discord we have created the ultimate cabin tier ranking guide for cross out you're like what mr. G how did you do it that's right well settle in this one's gonna be a bit of a long one but what we're gonna do is we're gonna rank every single cabin in the game all the way from your little white cabs to your blues to your specials to your epics to your legendaries and we're going to rank them with a grade of either D, C, B, A, or the coveted S tier class of cabin. So settle in, buckle up. We're going to start with, of course, the garbage cabins, the D class cabins. Now, before I get into this video, everybody's going to have a cabin. They're going to be like, well, this cabin's great with this. Or I was able to do amazing in this cabin. Yes, I know that. But what we did is we went ahead and we ranked these cabins by overall how versatile are they, how effective are they with a wide group of weapons. Basically, I've driven every single one of these cabins. I spent time with the best players I know making this list and then I brought it up to the Discord, which is another 2000, and we went over it there. We hammered it and we tweaked it and we updated it. And this is the list that we all agreed on and we're like, that's solid, G. That's the list. So let's get to it. D-class cabins. Here we go. Our first D-class cabin, starting in the white cabins, is the Docker cabin. It's just too slow and derpy. It's just not that great. You're going to be better off using something like a Gorilla, Huntsman, Duster, pretty much any of the other white cabins you're going to be better off with than that. But it is our only white D-class cabin on to blues now this the trucker cabin is sadly our only blue cabin coming in at d i remember when i first started the game thinking yeah it's my first heavy cabin i'm gonna get it it's gonna be awesome it's just too slow and uh, since they changed the game and they they took away an energy point from heavy cabins uh heavy cabins that don't have a good perk it just it really gimps them right out the door so this trucker is going to get a solid D rating on to D rated epic cabins. Ah, uh, yes, our first garbage cabin, the epic cabin. It's basically based off of a helicopter cabin, and um, it's a medium cabin, but its perk is complete garbage. Let's look at this weapon damage increases by 1.5% per second while the car is in stealth. The bonus is reset after five seconds of so uh, you get like a maybe a seven eight percent damage boost if you do it just completely perfectly there's other cabins that will do the medium cabin job better than the ghost cabin not to mention way easier to build around the weld points on this cabin are an absolute nightmare on to our next garbage cabin our next garbage cabin is a light cabin and you wouldn't think that because we don't have hardly very many light cabins in the D category, but the Cerberus is one of them. I wanted to love this cabin. It has a built-in melee weapon right on the front. But what the problem is, is just look at the way this thing is designed. You try and use that borer drill, you just end up wedging yourself. Making this cabin extremely hard to build around and pretty much nullifying the perk. That melee that's built into the front, you will almost never get kills with that. I swear to you, it's not gonna happen. Go watch my videos on this cabin. It's a flaming pile of garbage, this cabin. And on to our last D-rated cabin. Let's take a peek. Now, I remember when the werewolf cabin came out. I was like, what? You get to drive a little controllable drone that can be detonated in 10 seconds? That's kind of cool. Um, except it's almost never useful at all. Yeah, it's a light cabin, so I mean, it's better than some of the other ones in this category because it's going to be a little bit faster or have more energy but there will be other cabins that will do the job of this cabin better none of the cabins that are epic in this tier of d have perks that are useful at all on 
to the C-rated cabins. All right, guys, coming in slightly better than the Docker is the WWT-1. And it gets a C rating simply because it's got more energy because it doesn't get slapped with that heavy cabin category, which dings an energy off the cabin. Not much to say, it's not an amazing white cabin. Also coming in in the C category for comments is the Huntsman. Now this is arguable that the Gorilla and the Huntsman are all very pretty similar, but we're giving this one a C because it's somewhat of a versatile new player cabin. You can use it. There you go. Really not much to say about it. Let's get into the blues. Ah, uh, the carapace. Our first blue cabin to get slapped with the C rating. Man, I mean, there's just, I'm sorry, it doesn't have any perks. It's not that easy to build around. I mean, you can, it's kind of boxy. It just doesn't do anything that great. Notice it doesn't even say medium cabin, light cabin, or heavy cabin. It literally just says tank cabin. The only reason to own this cabin is if you want to make tank art builds. Other than that, there's no reason to own this cabin. And speaking of cabins that there's no reason to own unless you want to make an art build, the Jockey Medium Cabin. This thing came out with uh, the Valentine's pack and they got you the hydraulic wheels. Tarjum, how come we only have one set of hydraulic wheels still? Not really much to say guys, it's a medium cabin, it's an art cabin, deserves a C. On to the specials. Now guys, when I first started playing Crossout, the Jawbreaker was a totally meta cabin. It, every, it could do everything. It was awesome. It used to be, it wasn't, yeah, they moved it to a heavy cabin category. Now it used to be a medium cabin. Um, it's just not that great anymore. I mean, it's okay. It's not awful for a special, but there's other cabins that'll do its job a lot better. It's so huge. Look at this thing. How many weld points wide is this thing? It's absolutely massive. Yeah, you can stick ammo and fuel into these little slots, but it's just a gigantic cabin. Other ones are gonna do it better. On to C-rated epics. All right, guys, here we go with the Dusk Light Epic Cabin. Not much to say about it other than that it boosts homing rockets, which is just very niche. So there's other cabins that are gonna be a lot more versatile for you. If you play homing rockets all the time, sure, this cabin's probably an A for you. But other than that, it's just not a particularly versatile cabin. And coming in at our last C-rated cabin is the Tus. Yep, the Rammy one where people drive around and boost into your face and blow you up. Now, there were a couple Tusk fanboys on the Discord that were like, no, no, this thing should be an A or a B. Um, we originally actually had it in at D, uh, but we compromised with the fanboys that, yeah, I guess there are some players that are really good with the Tusk. There are. But it's a very not versatile cabin. It has to be at the front of your build. And all you can do is make a booster Rammy thing with this thing. So highly don't recommend to spend your coins on unless that's what you want to drive for the rest of your life. And cross out, let's move up to B-grade cabins. Our first B-rated common cabins will be the Huntsman and the Gorilla. We can consider these pretty much interchangeable. Um, the Gorilla, the Huntsman, pretty much the same. Decent versatile new player cab for starting the game stick with this thing use it you'll be fine onto the blues in the b category all right our first blue to get a rating of b is the fury there's really not much to say about it it's not a huge cabin it is a medium um you have to get it with a pack if the price it's going to take to get it it's just it's not that amazing but it's okay not a lot to say about it on to the next one yep i'll say the same thing about the bear that i did for the fury it's just not that over it's just kind of underwhelming it's medium cabin it'll do what it needs to do not particularly easy to build around kind of some goofy weld points nothing to love nothing to hate and we're giving it a b all right on to the specials in the b category pilgrim's gonna get a b rating it's kind of a large wide cabin um there's just not many situations where you're going to want to use it you'll notice we're getting a lot of medium cabins in this category um we had a lot of the heavies some of the heavies throw it showing up in the lower ratings but uh the pilgrim just not much to say about it there's other cabins that'll do its job a lot better i mean it's got no perks so it's going to be down here uh, b category onto our last special cabin in the b category all right the bat cabin gets a rating of b it's light it's fast it's got decent energy but doesn't have any perks 
It's not particularly well suited for building around. It's not terrible. Really great for making hot rods. So if you want to make hot rod art builds, absolutely amazing. But we made this list based around PVP effectiveness and versatility. All right, on to B-rated epic cabins. Now the cockpit is a light cabin. It's going to make good speed. And if you're boosting, it's going to make your weapons do extra damage. And this thing's great, I guess, if you're going to drive like melee crazy wedges at full speed other than that it's a very niche cabin that you're really not going to want to use very often will it help you with race will it make boosters more effective yes is it the best cabin you can pick for pvp no is it the worst no giving this thing a b all right guys here we go with the howl it's a medium epic cabin this thing's getting a b it's going to be good for droners if you're running drones it's going to boost your drones by you know 20 percent for 10 seconds so it's gonna it's gonna make you go a lot faster so if you're using drones on wheels uh this is the cabin for you but come on if you're using drones shame on you shame on you no it's fun do what makes you happy and cross out if that's how you like to play play that way um on to our next one that we're gonna hit with a b rating in epic category now this one pains me to see in the b category and i wouldn't always say this one's a b because if you're gonna use it with legs you can have a really good laggy build. I could go A with the Step Spider. I call this one a B plus. And this thing used to be an S cabin for sure until other better cabins came out and dropped. It's gonna make legs uh, increase their speed by 10 kilometers an hour. But since Targem went in and buffed legs and improved the mechanics of how they work, this cabin has become less effective and has fallen uh, prey to power creep and there's just other better cabins out there. Um, and you're no longer just stuck to using this as your only cabin on legs. Although, it's a solid cabin for legs, definitely a B plus, probably one of the best B rated cabins you can get. All right, the Photon, Don's Children, medium cabin coming in. What are you gonna get with this? Additional damage of energy weapons to heated parts increased by 130%. Now, if it was just a bonus to energy weapons, that would be an awesome cabin, but the fact that it has to be the heated parts makes this cabin really finicky to use. You've got to use an Aurora or flame weapons with it and then pair them with energy weapons. So the number of builds you can run with this cabin is so extremely limited that it really gimps it on its versatility. All right, here we have the call medium cabin. This thing goes faster the more drones that you launch. It's all right if you're running drones on wheels. Uh, turrets also boost it, so if you're a Cobra turret dropper or you're running around with drones, this thing will go ridiculously fast, but it's just good for that. Nothing else. And our last B-rated cabin is the Quantum. This thing used to be meta way back in the day before other cabins took its job and did it better. Small size makes it easy to build with. Um, if the vehicle does not receive damage for 10 seconds, energy weapon damage increases by 20%. That almost never happens that you don't take damage for 10 seconds in combat. Can it work? Sure. Uh, are there other cabins that'll do this job better? Yes. Is it a decent cabin? Yes. I'll put this one at a B plus. It's a really solid B cabin. All right, guys, on to the A cabins and then lastly, S tier cabins. Let's get over and take a look at the A tier cabins. Our first A tier cabin and common rarity is the light cabin is the duster. It's just fast. It's maneuverable and it's really tiny. It's great on hover. You can stick whatever you want on it. You can make a tiny, quick little build, extremely versatile. One of the best white cabins you can grab in the game is the Duster. Nothing else to say about the Sprinter. Exact same that I would say about the Duster. Really good, small, light cabin. Very similar weld points and parameters. You can stick it on hover. You can stick it on a tiny wheelie build. Extremely versatile, nimble, fast. Go with these cabins white. If you're a new player, try them out. You'll enjoy the speed. Speed is life. Thank me later. On to blue A-rated cabins. Our first blue cabin that's in the A category is the Wyvern. It's medium cabin. It's going to give you good speed, tonnage, and power. Not a lot to say. They did improve it when they added about a year and a half ago weld points to the top of this cabin. It's not too huge, a little wonky to build around, but you can make some cool hot rods out of this thing. And it's fast and you're gonna have a good time driving it. It was my first blue cabin I ever got and crossed out. Had no regrets grabbing this bad boy. On to the next one. 
Our next blue cabin in A tier is the Hot Rod. Absolutely need to own this one if you're gonna make yourself some Hot Rod looking art builds, but it's really easy to build around. It's tiny, it's small, it's compact. It's speed is good, tonnage and mass limit are good. It's a versatile little blue cabin. If you wanna just make a bunch of builds, Hot Rod's not gonna do you any bad. It's good, but all the rest of the A tier cabins we're gonna talk about have perks. Let's get into the A tier cabins with perks, epics, and legendaries. All right, guys, coming in at our first A tier epic is the Humpy. That's right, she's a heavy. A long time ago, they dinged her an energy point, but she's got a great little perk. Receiving damage temporarily increases damages. You deal 30% at 1,000 damage. So you can get a huge damage bonus as you're getting pelted. So if you just slap tons of armor and durability on this thing, it's great for reaper boxes or anything that's going to be putting out solid dps it can do awesome things and it's got the most tonnage of any other cabin except for the legendary heavy counterpart this thing's a beast if you want to build big boys the humpy is your go-to cabin all right guys next up is the torero medium cabin it increases the accuracy of all mounted weapons by 20 percent not only is, does it do that, it has 12 energy, it's fast, it doesn't have a ton of tonnage, um, but that perk of increasing your accuracy is really handy. Um, we did have this cabin lower in the B class, and then I was like, ah, we went back and forth between B and A. Um, it's a solid cabin, but now it has less use than it used to. When it first came out in the game, it was, it was pretty solid. It's a versatile cabin. A lot of weapons are gonna enjoy that perk greatly. Um, people are telling me a lot of people are just using Mandrakes, running Toreros because it really groups the fire. Uh, I haven't played that one a lot. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, on to the next one. Ah, uh, the Omnibox Medium Cabin. Now this thing's really cool and it has two modes. It's got a mode that's gonna make your engine go faster and it's got a mode that's gonna increase your weapon reload. So this thing's great for anything that uses reload based weapons it's also really nice on hovers especially sideways hovers because it's just so teeny it's a tiny little box it's really easy to weld and mount to uh and it really it's so handy to have that versatility of going between horsepower uh, and reload i really think this cabin shines on hover but there's a lot of other things you can use it for omnibox solid a rated cap Next up, Blight A tier. If you're gonna use fire, this thing's the one to use. Uh, you activate this, your fire turns green, which is just cool, um, but it boosts damage from flamethrowers and artillery by 40%, flamethrower range by 50%, flame puddle size by 30%, basically huge fat bonuses for fire, flame, and artillery. Blight is your go-to. It's, yeah, it's an A cabin, but it's 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 an A and not an S because you just all you can use it with is fire. But a great cabin. On to the next one. Coming in in A tier, we got the ice box. Any weapons with limited turn angles is going to increase their damage by 15%. That means typhoons, tsunamis, executioners, tacklers, whole range of machine guns and cannons are getting a 15% damage boost right out the door and you don't have to do any fancy shenanigans to get it to work. It just works. Excellent, excellent cabin. One of its downsides though is it's a little bit wonky to build around, but it's a heavy, so it goes nice on legs and big builds and you can really build some cool heavy spidery shooty things with this bad boy i've enjoyed it and man you're not going to be bummed out by the dps you're going to get from the ice box all right guys here we go with the cohort cabin it is our only legendary cabin that we gave an a rating instead of an s tier rating too um and this was this was tough it's an a plus we argued a lot of people were like no it's s it, just not as many builds that you can use this for as there are other builds that you could use it for but it has a cool perk it's the heaviest cabin in the game it's got the most tonnage and mass limit it's an absolute beast and it's got a little drone you can launch which will give you a damage resistance to 30 percent and any allies or buddies that are around so it can do that for up to three people um, that bonus is going to be better for heavy cabins. This is a very niche little build, um, but it's kind of wonky and gigantic and weird to build around, but it is the ultimate super, super heavy cabin if you want to go big. All right, guys, it is time to do the ultimate and best cabins that we could think of in the game. Let's head over and do the S tier cabins. In the S tier, there were no white cabins, so we're going to start 
the blues, and the growl. If you're a new player to cross out, have this be the first cabin that you craft. It's a light cabin, it's gonna give you speed. Don't ignore the perks down there, I fused this one. Um, it's really easy to build around, it's tiny. You can put it on hover, you can put it on wheelie things, you can do quick shotgun builds with it. It is absolutely an S tier beginner cabin. Highly recommend this be one of the first cabins that you craft in the game. The favorite cabin sounds like you're driving a fart. It's got one of the worst engine sounds in the game, but it's a great cabin. Uh, basically what it does is it has an ability that lets you insta-cool your weapons. Anyone who plays weapons with heat-based weapons knows how important that is. Maybe you're shotgunning someone and you need one more shot to finish them and then, oh, weapon overheated, you can't shoot. Hit right click with this, weapons instantly cool down. Extremely good ability and perk. It's fast, it's tiny, it will work with any heat-based weapon. Great cabin to use. Next up in S tier, arguably one of the best cabins in the game. It's got an extremely good perk. It's a light cabin, but here's the perk. It's going to give you more ammo and it boosts your explosion radius by 20%. That affects just about every weapon in the game. From porcupines to tsunami shells to executioners to avengers. Anything that's going to go boom when you shoot something it's gonna boost that radius, meaning you're gonna get more armor penetration from this thing. Also, having more ammo can't be overstated how awesome that is. Really, really good cabin. Hands down, S tier cabin, the Harpy. On to the next one. All right, guys, here we go with the Echo. Not only is this one of the coolest looking cabins in the game, it's heavy, it's beefy. Oh, it does great sideways hover. Um, but it has this thing where you can charge and it's gonna be able to activate it and you're gonna get much quicker weapon reload. So with reload-based weapons, um, this thing is great and it's got a ridiculous amount of torque and horsepower. So you put it on hover, you're gonna get a really responsive hover. You put it on wheels, so you're gonna get a really torquey, fast, heavy cabin. It's one of the smaller heavy cabins. It's a good S-tier cabin. Here we go, guys, with the Bastion, AKA the Killdozer. It's got a huge blade on the front. You can tank damage to the front of this thing. It's also a heavy, um, but it just has a ton of damage resistances um, built right in to that blade, except for the energy damage resistance. If you want to put it on a leggy build or a tank build, you can put it on those Goliath track builds or you put a Goliath on each side and you put everything else behind. You can make a really tanky little box build. Super fun cabin. Highly recommended if you like to just take shots to the face. Get yourself Bastion. And almost all the legendary cabins are gonna come in at S tier because they're just some of the best cabins you can get in the game because they're some of the most expensive. And the Griffin is an extremely good light cabin, um, but it has an ability that not, not only does it cloak you, um, but Oculus and Verifier can't see you as well. And it makes your other three allies around you invisible. So not only does is it good with cloak, but it gives you a stealth mode for radar. It's just the ultimate sneaky, sneaky cabin. Uh, and it's fast and it looks cool. On to the next one. Now the Beholder, other than looking like a weird and Ravager cabin and our only weird looking Ravager cabin outside the CK on the Humpy, um, is if you have invisibility module not installed, it'll do that. So it's got a built in cloak for five seconds. If you have cloak installed, um, then you enhance this effect, meaning that you do not decloak instantly after taking damage. There's a delay. So you know when you hit cloak and you immediately get booted out of cloak, uh, this cabin will stay in there. It's a medium cabin. Uh, it's gonna be a good general cabin. Um, there are better ones you could use, but it's, it's a solid ability. Nothing bad to say about it. And last but not least on our cabin tier list is the Nova. It's a medium cabin. You'll see people using this one almost exclusively on hover because it makes it so easy to just keep your face pointed towards the enemy. It has a built-in shield in front for absorbing energy. Makes it pretty OP. It's a solid cabin. It's medium. It's got good energy. You do have to learn to build around the shield emitter, but overall, definitely S-tier cabin. All right, guys, I want you to blow up the comments. If you disagree with me on one of these, let me know down below in the comments if you think a cabin should be this or that or why let us know let's talk about this i will post uh the link to this list in the description so you guys can just have it it's a google it's a google docs google sheets you can check it out uh you can have it i'll put the link in description and yes we're working on a weapon tier list it's a little more complicated uh stay tuned on that one and as always 
Like and subscribe for all things Crossout. Be good, stay safe. I hope to see you guys on the next one. Mr. G, out.